five, four, three, two, one. What's good, Alex? Hey, Sana. How's it going? Good. Have good. you eaten? <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> you haven't had lunch? I haven't had lunch. Okay, why not? Because I dedicated to my work and didn't get around to it. <laughs> Anyways, welcome everybody to, uh, I don't know, we should have a name for this by now. Didn't we have like Remarkable or something? Remarkable. No, we had, had Lord, Lord, Lord something. Or something remarkable law maybe i don't know yeah. we'll figure it out as we go along welcome to our videos i'm senna this is alex i'm alex we both from radian law i am legal advisor at radian alex is the ceo welcome to our youtube videos and throughout the series throughout our videos we're just going to be chatting about the law we're going to be chatting about law we're going to be chatting about what we do chatting about the different ways in which we approach the law, the different ways in which we do things here at Radiant. By way of introduction, I am an employee at Radiant and Alex is the CEO, although we do have what he calls a flat structure. So if he doesn't like it. <laughs> do you not feel it's flat? Well, you don't like it if I say you're my boss. Nah. Why not? Well, uh, yeah. No, I don't like it if you say I'm, a, I'm your employer or something like that. Boss has a different connotation. Why well, does boss have a different connotation? I don't know. It's more relaxed. It was not in South Africa. What's the difference between boss and employer? I don't know. Sounds less formal. Alex is the CEO. The flat. I'm a legal advisor. We're flat. We're colleagues. 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 Cool. We can say that. Um, he's just going to give us a brief intro into a radiant law. Uh, our history, what we do, and where we've come from till now. All right. So uh, I set up Radiant uh, almost 10 years ago. So January next year, 2011, uh, 2021, will be 10 years. Uh, we are a law firm. We are an English law firm, but Senna and I are right now in South Africa, and most of the team are in Cape Town here in South Africa. Uh, we also have developers around the world. We have people in London too, uh, but majority of people here. We specialize in commercial contracts, and our purpose is to what I call fix the contracting problem. What fixing I mean, it. Fixing it. So you think it's broken? I think it's completely broken. I think if you ask anyone outside the law what it's like to do a contract, their eyes are going to roll and they're going to go, it's oh, horrible. It's boring, yeah. And, you know, there are people fighting over the wrong stuff, the contracts are impenetrable, it's a miserable experience, terrible way of creating relationships. So, so that's really what Radiant's about, is fixing that problem. And when I set up Radiant, and I used to be kind of a real lawyer, I was a partner at Latham & Watkins doing kind of technology outsourcing deals. Sorry, I'm a real lawyer. I work in Radiant, and I'd like to think I'm a real lawyer. No, you are a real lawyer, Senator, but I'm not really any longer CEO. So, okay. kind of, yeah. cool. so, so when I was doing kind of uh, set it up, it, it just seemed to me that, that fundamentally, We've got the incentives all wrong in the um, in the industry, right? We have. We're going to talk about timesheets, right? We, we, time we have timesheets uh, which incentivize taking more time, not less. We charge by the hour. The partnership structure is a terrible way of making progress, uh, and so the, the way traditional law firms were set up uh, doesn't help uh, improve and work on the problem. And that's why I think we're kind of stuck as an industry with a lot of talk but no real change. Um, because we're all incentivized actually to continue doing it the old way. I was reading up on a very, it's a very interesting stat actually that said that uh, law firms have for the last 78 years voted in some quarters of the most arrogant profession in the world. Yeah. You think, think that's believable? Yeah. I like to say that. <laughs> I set up Radiant so I didn't, I wasn't embarrassed about being in sound as a lawyer at cocktail yeah. parties. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> think lawyers have a great rep and, and sometimes I understand why, especially when when I'm the customer and have to use another law firm, it can be quite a, a painful experience. Okay. I don't really like being told that it's an estimate of X and this is how much it is an hour and mm. it's, you know, this is the way it is. So, so anyway, let's talk about the firm. So, um, so we set it up 10 years ago uh, as a company, not a partnership, no timesheets, only fixed price. Uh, we initially we specialized in kind of big outsourcing technology deals like mm -hmm. boutique. Uh, pretty rapidly, we started doing what we call uh, managed legal services, which means we, we support uh, lots of day-to-day -day contracts for big okay. UK, US, 
global corporations. And by support, it means we basically come in and we take over certain part of their legal services. Yeah, like, you know, all of the market data contracts or the services deals, procurement contracts, whatever. And we, you know, draft them, negotiate them, help them get them signed uh, and do that as a service. And that's now pretty much the dominant part of what we do as a firm. We still do some big deals. Uh, we do projects where we help companies like fix all of their contracts when there's legislative change, something like that. Uh, and we sell some tech, which we'll end up talking about that at some point. Um, uh, and we help companies fix their own contracts and processes and implement tech. Uh, so lots of tech, lots of process, some quite nice people. And it's like, it's like um, you know, run it as a service and actually get better. So, you know, we're really focused on how can we do this quickly? How can we take the pain out of it? How can it be a great experience? Innovation quickness and delivery yeah and just in general we're really awesome awesome people here at radiant law no they are the team's actually pretty good <laughs> it's and i think more than anything i'm um you know i generated a couple of months ago and i was surprised by how young we are as a team oh it's insane it's, it's like the children's crew said yeah it is ridiculously young so um, oh, i don't want to make you feel old no i am old no. definitely in this team yeah. okay cool um your words not mine yeah. i'm 26 yeah I'm and 49. i feel <laughs> <laughs> you have to laugh like that. I'm 26. Alex yeah. is a couple years older than me. Yeah, thank you. I didn't say you're 49. No, I appreciate that. Cool. Um, and, and I do feel like we're a young firm. I feel like we're energetic. I feel like we're very flexible. And I feel like we can meet client demands um, quickly and in a very innovative way. I think we're always coming up with creative ways of doing things. But we don't use the innovation word. We notice. We don't. Do we, very rarely do we use the word innovation. Why firm. not? Well, one, I'm bored of it. I mean, the whole industry is taken up with now talking about, how, you know, how we're going to be innovative and do innovation. Yeah. And basically nothing's changed. So the words has no meaning now. It has lost meaning. And I, I do remember, and I'm probably guilty of this, when, you know, sending my CV and my cover letter and everything, innovative thinking. I mean, those are the buzzwords to yeah. legal services now. Those are the kind of the big things that everyone is looking for. Like, I'm an innovative thinker. I'm a, innovative problem solver and, and and i do agree with you that it's lost meaning yeah and it's also you need to kind of demonstrate not assert right the classic rule of sales so so saying i'm innovative especially in this world where everyone's claiming to be innovative now it's not terribly helpful but the other thing is that you kind of need a purpose right we talked about fixing the contracting problem yeah. and we want to focus on what are the things that are actually you know getting in the way of meeting clients needs how can we meet those needs better? And if you focus about that and talk about that, you don't really talk about innovation. You just talk yeah. about what is it that's that possible we that we need to do. Right? Cool. So sort of just leaning into that and, and moving on to what we actually want to talk about sort of in the meat of our discussion. Um, we've moved away from the way traditional law firms do things. Uh, yeah. For example, I'm in the office right now in jeans and sneakers and a T-shirt, even wearing a chain. My mother would not believe that I'm practicing as a lawyer. If yeah, I my mother would be horrified. She would be horrified. We should talk to her. Yeah, she'd have a conversation with her. So I'm here in my jeans. This is how I dress every day. Most of the time I work from home, where I'm usually wearing shorts or sweatpants, even a vest. Sometimes pajamas. You didn't? No, I did not need to know that. Well, I'm just okay. letting you know. All Maybe right. the people want to know. Like, this is me opening up to you. All right. My boss. This is very bad for your career. <clears throat> should have a meeting with HR. <laughs> should get an HR department. That'd be amazing. That would be cool. Yeah, we yeah. have an HR department. Yeah. So it, we've moved away from the way traditional law firms do things, right? Mm. In terms of the way we dress. Mm. Every single day we're wearing whatever it is we want to wear. Why was that important for you to kind of break those barriers, barriers down and say, okay, this is not an episode of suits where you're walking around looking like Harvey Specter. Which is a shame day. because I actually like suits. Really? Yeah. You suits the series or like suits the actual attire? Actually, I don't mind wearing suits, but like we were saying, I think we've got one each. Yeah, so I have one suit. I think I have one suit. I don't wear it very often. Uh, well, I, th I think, you know, a lot of these principles came from a statement of we care about outputs, not inputs. Okay. Right. So we care about achieving stuff, we care less about quite, you know, what it takes to get there. Right. So, so we want to get rid of work, not extend work. Right? Okay. So we want to be paid for doing a contract, not how many hours it took to do the contract. Yeah. And on the way through, who cares what someone wears? 
Right? Well, I mean, so, it doesn't matter in terms of client perception. Like if I showed up in a navy suit or a gray suit or a black suit, because obviously, you know, industry standards say that you can't wear brightly colored suits in any event. Absolutely. You have to present yourself in a particular That's way. That's a gray suit, really, if you want to be a lawyer. I think navy suit. Navy is the way. You can now. do navy, but it's I think school. Yeah, gray might be a bit old school, too. Mm. I think what's it is blue, actually. Navy with brown, navy with brown shoes. Combination of the new millennium decades. The new millennium lawyer. No, it's powerful. Okay. I can bet you. So now. this is why we don't have suits of radiant. We don't really want to have these kind of <laughs> conversations. And our, our clients don't mind. And obviously we, you know, we're in lockdown and you know, yeah, or not really now in South Africa, opened up. Um, and the office we're in right now is, is is open on a voluntary basis, and we're the only people here. We're the only people here today. Um, but I think you know the world's changed, right? And, and not everyone's wearing a suit to Zoom. Uh, and I don't think our clients have already cared. No, I've, I have. I haven't had a client complain on a phone call when I show up shirtless. <laughs> I'm joking, Alex. I haven't shown up on a client call shirtless. Right. But I do Thank wear a t-shirt. I make sure. We do actually have a policy which says we prefer you wear clothes. Yeah, that is our I've, I've, I've read it. I've read yeah. it. So I do put on a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, so obviously we're more geared towards actual delivery of the work mm. instead of just how people perceive us. And I think that's important. Yeah, super important. Because I feel, and this is just a personal opinion, I feel more relaxed when I'm wearing whatever it is I want to wear. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm constrained because I look at a tie. I know firms, I have friends who work at firms where they're required to wear a tie from nine to five every single day. Right. I'm like, well, that's uncomfortable. I feel like I'm being, mm. I don't know, chained. But it can look good, surely. Well, suits can help. Well, I guess looking good. But anyway, the point is we don't ban suits. We don't ban suits. But looking good, does looking good matter in the way that you deliver your actual work? I don't know. I really do. I don't um, think so, personally. I wear them when I'm, I'm doing sales in person. Mm. I wear a suit. Okay. But one of the things that, you know, you touched on, and, and, and I want to circle back to that, I think it's, it's, it's probably going to be very important going forward in our chats, is the way we, we price and the way we build our clients. Okay. It's very different from the way traditional law firms do it. So yeah. uh, from my understanding, a lot of law firms, and they've been doing this since probably the 1960s, uh, where, earlier, yeah. earlier than that, yeah, yeah, yeah. earlier than the 1960s, but it probably became very popular at that time, where clients are billed by the hour. What mm. does that mean? And what's the difference between how we do it? So you can just right. start with both. Okay, so so um, the, the one thing you won't get from Radiant is an hourly rate. Um, and we get asked, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we don't do it. Our day rate don't have an hourly rate. Um, so uh, the traditional way of working is that you measure the number of hours you do and you charge now obscene amounts of money, right? So in the UK market, you know, there, there are lawyers charging over a thousand pounds. It's not norm, but it's, it's it happens. So um, uh, they charge a lot of money, and um, uh, as a as a client, you just pay what the number of hours are, and that has no bearing on the value to the client, right? Uh, if you're buying a top of the range legal mind, and you need a top of the range legal mind, clients may be okay with that. Right? I think I think they go, you know, it's actually cheaper the price, right? Given the yeah. significance of the advice, for example, I'm getting. But you know, you don't you don't ever with a law firm buy just the top of the you know no. the pile senior partners view. They come with a whole bunch of associates, yeah. Right? And you'll much as we love the associates and so on, you know, they come with a lot of hours too and a lot of rates, and suddenly the overall value is is probably less less value. Uh, but it's also unpredictable, right? So this is incredibly frustrating for business because they live in a world of budgets. It's right? very speculative. So if you go to a lawyer and say, how much is it going to cost to get me this? He can't give you an exact amount. He'll say, right, in the range of this, it'll take me four to five hours to do it. Right. And, it, and it's a crapshoot what you get, right? So we've had, you know, increasing discipline from required from clients of um, estimates, even caps. Uh, which gives them more predictability and law firms, I think, are being held more and more to the estimates. But that takes us to the second problem, which is much more fundamental, which is charging by the hour incentivizes you to spend more hours. Does it incentivize me to spend more hours or, I don't know, does it put an actual value into what I actually do? So if I can say, okay, I have this much experience, yeah. this many years in the industry, it actually allows me to quantify my worth to the firm and my worth to the client. 
if yeah, I can say it well. really, because because mm-hmm. that's all context specific. What what matters? Yeah. Value is in the eye of the customer, right? Yeah, it's not in the the value of your certificates and experience. The value is in this particular scenario. I have this problem. This problem is worth X for me to solve, right? It, it's yeah. for the customer to ultimately do that. And in a different scenario, the same customer may say it's actually not as valuable, or maybe more valuable. Mm-hmm. But that value is not correlated necessarily to how many hours it takes. In fact, if you take less time and get the answer to mm-hmm. me faster, that may be a lot more valuable. And you know, in-house lawyers find this all the time when they go in-house and they kind of, you know, coming out of a law firm with that mentality to a completely different experience where the value is a quick answer which is what the business team wants. More than a more well thought out. Answer. Yeah, it has to be good enough, right? Good mm-hmm. enough. And that's often good enough. So, um, so, and then it takes you to the real problem from my perspective, which is, you know, given our purpose is to fix the contracting problem, yeah. right? We need to align our incentives with fixing the contracting problem, right? We don't, we don't want to be incentivized to drag out negotiations. Yes. So, so uh, we want to make sure that we're going to get paid the same amount whether it dragged out or not. So it's in our interest, you know, obviously within the bounds of not giving the farm away or, yeah. you know, under my client's position, there are all sorts of protections we put in place around that. Just get the deal done, right? And we have figured out a huge amount about how to deliver contracting better, yeah. which came from the fact that it's in no one's interest, right? If you have to work later at night, you spend less time in the park. We want people to not be working past midnight every night and, yeah. and not be incentivized to spend more time and stuff. And instead, for all of us to get smarter about how to do this. And so, you know, you, yeah. you were another firm before, right? Yeah. And then you joined us virtually recently. Yeah. So what's your experience? What's the change been like? So the change has been in the sense that I don't feel, and, and this is this is twofold, right? So I felt like fee targets were assigned accomplishment mm-hmm. for the most part because that's okay. how you feel as an associate okay as an associate you feel like okay i'm being rewarded for putting in the hours and billing this much and then you look at your billables and you're like oh hey i billed this much whether or not i added value to the client doesn't matter to me <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my laughs> i mean well, i just go to the director and i say look chief i made my fee target and this is how it is now from an ethical point of view can be problematic. I must admit, deeply problematic. Very problematic in the sense that okay, I'm coming towards the end of the month, right? And I'm below my fee target. Mm-hmm. Below my mm-hmm. fee target, I have clients coming in. Mm-hmm. Now the first thing that comes to mind is okay, how do I meet my target? Problematic. Problem number one is I'm now going to be spending more time on relatively simple tasks that mm-hmm. should be written off very quickly. Mm-hmm. That's something I should turn around in a day. I'm now saying, well, I spent five minutes perusing and considering. I didn't even know what perusing meant until I started working. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's magic words we use in the timesheet. <laughs> in the timesheet, yeah. yeah. Perusing and considering. And reviewing. 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 Documentation. Not reviewing. Not reviewing. Yeah, but then obviously there's charge back to the client because yeah, obviously. you're spending time on the matter. I don't mind that because it means that I get to my target. Now, I reach my client point. felt about it. Well, you see, empathy, Sana. well, my empathy is there, but then each man for himself, God for us all. I have needs too. You have your targets. I have my targets. Yeah, you're being right? incentivized to, meet, to do that. I have to meet fee targets. And if I don't meet the fee target, I'm sitting there with um, head of department and it's why I haven't you met your fee target. Mm-hmm. And the problem that I faced, or that I will say in general people will face, is at times your fee target is not linked to the actual work that you do it's the type of matter that you work on it's the complexity of the deals that you work on it's not always going to be oh you know you were were not working hard enough for a particular month Mm. you know at times you've worked really hard you put in the hours but because of the nature of the work that you're doing maybe you can't build as much for it and there's also what does it mean to be for work right there's a huge emphasis here about what we call continuous improvement yes right and that's work yeah. Right, automating stuff, rewriting stuff, fixing yeah. stuff. You know, you've been heavily involved in this. Yeah. Right, that's work, mm-hmm. but that's not charged directly to a client. No, it's not. But it's it's, it's hours that are spent in a working week. Yeah. doing. Yeah, uh, I can't charge to a client. Now, client gets the invoice at the end of the month, and then he'll pick up the phone and say, "Sorry, why is my bill this big? Why is my bill so large?" Now, from a firm perspective, there's this is amazing. 
It's amazing. Huge bills going. I mean, yeah. the, the bill is high. We've met targets. We're profitable. Mm -hmm. We are functioning. We're moving forward. We can pay bonuses. We can pay staff salaries, expenses, overheads, all that stuff. But now I have to face the music with the client and explain why I charged him God knows how much money for perusing and considering <laughs> and communicating <laughs> and communicating yeah. and telling. So, yeah. so that that's kind of my take with regards to the biddable power structure. Um, but but okay, so that's yeah. cool. So that's what it was like, right? And obviously, yeah. the, you see in the light, the scales have fallen from your eyes. They're falling You're from a better eyes. person, better person, better person than you used to be, and that's good. But what's the difference like coming here? So, like, what was your experience now? First day walking in here, I'm looking for a timesheet, mm. right? Alex, where's my timesheet? Mm. Alex told me there's no timesheet here, Reed, and you just do the work, you record the work on our system to show that you're actually doing it. But that's not time. But right? it's not time, right? No. So it's just to show that you are What doing matters you're working on, you yeah, track the map. You, you can just track the map, yeah. yeah. But I don't have a timesheet. And a timesheet, for those who don't know, if you're not in the legal industry, you haven't worked in a law firm, a timesheet is basically, how can I put it? Hell. <laughs> it is hell. Because you have to write down what you do each in every six minute increment of your day, right? So every six minute of your day has to be accounted for. So whether you're billing hours, whether you're chatting with a colleague, whether you're doing training, whether you're studying for your exams, whatever it is, it has to be included in the timesheet to show what you did, how much hours you're spending on billable work, how much hours you're spending on other things so that they can review and see how profitable you are as an employee. Now, the problem with that is it comes with a lot of pressure, it's a lot of admin, um, you, you don't catch a break. Obviously, you each and every single minute you're doing that. So I found that refreshing, but at the same time, I didn't feel like I wasn't working as hard or I wasn't held accountable for the work that I'm doing because we still have, you know, time constraints, we still have time targets, we still have our own targets to meet to our clients, our service levels. Yeah, but that's, that's very different like that. to ours. That's like yeah, yeah, yeah. how quickly we get it back yeah. to them, not, not no, how long it takes. Not how long it takes. But so for me, it was... I don't feel like I have Big Brother watching me all the time. Mm. At times, it's kind of how you feel when you're working all the time. Mm. And you kind of have to remember, and that's, that's the other thing, you have to remember to fit it in each and every single day. Now, if you're dedicated yeah. and you're good at what you do, you can be able to fill it in nicely. You have to be a very well. organized person. Very organized. But some people aren't as organized. As, I was never as organized as that. I'm sure. And they would fill it in at the end of the day. or. At the, the end month. of the week or at the end of the month. <laughs> yeah. So now you're thinking, okay, on that gloomy Monday, you're going through your emails and saying, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I did I this. I had coffee yeah. with Alex, I, yeah, yeah. X, Y, Z. And then I went to chat, I went to marketing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you're filling it. Most of the stuff that you're filling in the timesheet end up being inaccurate. Yeah. And not a true reflection of your actual work performance, the work that you do, your value. But it's also, it's not a true reflection of the value to the client. Exactly, to the client as well. Right. So you're just sitting there filling it in for the sake of filling it in. But law firms around the world, I mean, it's not a South African thing, it's not a UK thing. Yeah, exactly. it's law firms everywhere use the same system. Except um, for radio. Except for radio, obviously. Uh, but yeah, final thoughts on timesheets and billable hours? I think it's just soul crushing. And it totally takes the focus off what it should be, which is long-term improvement. So how can we get better and how can we get rid of work? Right? You cannot do any real innovation unless you are materially reducing the amount of effort required as well as being able to um, improve the value delivered, right? And there's anti-incentives all the way across the board if we use timesheets. Uh, so we had to get rid of it. So the only way forward. And I think this is the acid test, right? I do not think it is possible to be truly innovative as a law firm and have timesheets at, um, time. at the same time. And I think that explains why the market is so dismal and actually delivering better services. And what would you say to the defenders of the timesheets who will say, to defend the timesheets and billable hours, who will then say, well, how else can we measure our profitability to clients? Oh, profitability, yeah. So so we, we have a hack for that. So, so, you know, at the end of the month, you do what we call the resourcing percentage, right? So you allocate percentages of your time yeah. for the month to the other. So, so we can calculate profitability from that, but it's it's always 100%. So you could have worked three hours a day in the month or 12 hours a day, yeah. and it would still be 100%. So we, we know how to allocate effectively your salary against 
the revenue from the different accounts. From the different accounts. So we so we have a, we have a rough, and that's good enough. You you can tell. Yeah, then you can tell. Okay, this is how much money he is making the firm based on what he's paid, and it is how profitable it is. It's two hundred percent. But but it's like the focus is not how profitable can we make Santa. The focus is on how can we deliver more value to the clients, and the numbers are, are fine in terms of sorting themselves out because we're playing a long game, right? This we need long term thinking which is not about, you know, can we make, you know, an extra buck this month, but how can we get better and better as an organization, deliver more and more value, which makes us more and more valuable to our clients, and the numbers will sort themselves out just fine. They'll sort themselves out just fine. Yeah. Okay. That's well, the thinking. Cool. Well, moving along to the final thing we're going to talk about in our first session, mm. uh, quick hits, interesting things you saw in the news this week regarding the law. Yeah. Anything that you picked up? Yeah. So... So there was that article um, uh, by Tony Williamson about uh, law firms doing more to show their colors in terms of uh, environmental ESG, environmental social governance issues. And I think actually, you know, uh, I can be a little bit rude about the industry, but I think law firms often do a lot of good in this area, right? I think yeah. pro bono work could be fantastic and so on. I thought it was an interesting take. There's more. I was very, yesterday I was at fun with, um, uh, project that came out of the UK for law firms now is spreading it wider called the Chancery Lane Project, uh, which came up with standard clauses for use in environmental aspects okay. of contracts and so on yeah. to encourage, you know, a, a net zero world. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, I, th I think it's point's a good one that we can talk about it more. So, and what's been your, you know, I think we do quite a lot, but what have you yeah. seen at Radiant? That so, for example, I haven't printed a single piece of paper since I started working here. That's right. Not a single one. I pulled the wire out. <laughs> <laughs> so we we were paperless. Yeah. Uh, that when we plant trees as well. So um, yeah. So we plant a tree for every every contract we do for a client. So that's we, a lot of trees. We plant a lot of thousands <laughs> of trees a year. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of trees. Um, so yeah, that, that that's that's for me being the, the the big sticking point. And I think a lot of firms say, well, we're paperless and we're trying this, we're trying that. But are they truly? Because if you're still gonna Sign up, get a piece of someone, get someone to sign something. Hmm. You know, we're a B, B Corp, right? What's a B Corp? Anyway. Okay, so, so there's an interesting, I'm having a debate next week about this. So, we're a B Corp. So, B Corp is like a certification that came out of the US, um, uh, which basically certifies like fair trade, but for the company. Okay. So, we're certified as a nice company. We're one of the few law firms in, we're good guys. in the UK that's a, a B Corp, I think, second. Um, and uh, it's been quite good exercise of kind of hygiene. Mm -hmm. uh, and for us, it was just a chance to kind of basically run down the checklist and see what, what we could do, because we were kind of doing it anyway. But it's interesting, you didn't even know that. Wow, all right, so, so the, the theory in the industry is that you'll bring in all these you know, trendy young, young types in their 20s, because they care passionately about these things we care and, about and will be incentivized to join you if you become a B Corp. But if you're a leading apart firm right now, don't bother. <laughs> 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 but I think we do it. We yeah. do it for other reasons. We do it because it's the right thing to do, not because we don't want to hire more senators. We should hire more senators, but, but no. I don't know. I don't think it actually well, works. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's attractive to me. Good. Now that I'm glad you got a soul. I'm very pleased to I hear this. Soul. I was getting a little bit worried there. No, no, no. We should save the. We should definitely save the environment. I do think a lot of law firms have a lot have a big part to play because we print a lot of unnecessary things, and also we advise mm. clients on stuff that can have huge environmental impacts. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think we have we have a big role to play. But anyways, for our first session, Alex. All right. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. Thank you. Catch you next time. All right. Next time. Cheers. Cheers. Can I get some lunch? Now? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You can.